guys, this is Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today we're gonna talk about Walking Disaster by Jamie McGuire, the companion novel to Beautiful Disaster. I loved being in Travis's head. Should that concern me that I loved being in a foul-mouthed fat boy's mind? It should, but it doesn't. And I'm gonna start this off by saying if you haven't read Beautiful Disaster, you shouldn't watch this because while it's the same book technically as Beautiful Disaster, the same storyline, there will be spoilers. So if you want to get into this series, I'm going to link right up here in the corner my Beautiful Disaster review and I have a huge non-spoiler section with that. I met Jamie McGuire the other week on the 3rd. We have the worst traffic in Houston, I swear it. I don't even know what number of biggest cities we are, but we're big and we're, we have lots of traffic. And everyone got there late and there were people waiting at 2.30 in the afternoon and the signing was, I think, supposed to start at 6.00. Jamie McGuire got there and she was just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm late. But traffic, we understand, we live this daily. And I got a picture with her and she signed a couple of the copies of books I had of hers. She was so down to earth and so sweet. Oh, and Jamie McGuire has quite possibly the most adorable son ever, Tucker. He, biggest blue eyes, he was precious. He was so well behaved, it was so late at night and he wasn't fussy at all. He must have took a very long nap. I just, I have this adoration of young children and there were so many moms with their kids there and I'm just cooing at them. It was a good day. So I'm going to start talking details of Walking Disaster. If you haven't read Beautiful Disaster, you should go away now because I'm not giving a non-spoiler section with this. So I'll see you guys later if you haven't read it. Bye! The freaking prologue. The tears in the beginning. The freaking prologue. Already I'm crying. His mom said, one of these days you're going to fall in love, son. Don't settle for just anyone. Choose the girl that doesn't come easy. The one you have to fight for and then never stop fighting. Freaking tears, oh my god. And that explains so many of Travis's actions and the way that he's become the character that he is. And that at the very beginning, like totally nutshelled him. If I hadn't read the, the book before, and felt like I had a decent understanding of who Travis Maddox was. I really feel like that little bit was such vital information. So here I am in the prologue picturing three-year-old baby Travis saying, I need her more than Jesus does. And then also, I don't care if Jesus wanted her or not, she was my mommy. I, 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 tears. And we get these little things from Travis's view, how Abby was the first girl he ever opened a door for. And there was this one part that I found particularly amusing, like amusing as hell, there were two of these, and I was a fit of laughter. She did some sort of magic bra trick to get it off and out of her shirt. All women seem to know that same maneuver. Yeah, Trav, we learned that one in finishing school. So Abby came out wearing this outfit and she's like, What do you think? She asked, pouting her lips, attempting to imitate a model or a duck. I wasn't sure which. And there were so many funny parts and this book only made me love Shep more. Seriously, Shepley? See, I, yes. Fucking A. I haven't heard that saying and I miss it. Pepe Le Pew over there, threatening my death. Travis said that no woman could ever make him blubber and get slobbering drunk over losing her. And I'm just like, oh, Trav, you, you wait and see. I, I appreciate the small details in books, and this is one of those small details that I just loved. At one point when Travis was watching her sleep, he heard her nose make this sweet buzzing noise. And it's those small little moments that he found such adoration in. And I, I, those were the most precious moments. Travis describing Abby. Abby, she's a pigeon. A demonic pigeon that fucks with my head so bad I can't think straight. Yeah, pretty much. Even when we were in her head, I questioned most of her motives. But I knew the general, I just didn't understand anything else. She's, she's a confusing one. A demonic pigeon I think fits the bill. Ah, oh, I freaking loved the birthday scene so much more from Travis's perspective. That was one of my favorites. So when Shepley was grilling Travis about loving Abby, their whole conversation. So who's the pansy ass now? Fuck you. Admit it. No. And then Shepley's like, I knew it! And you know all those parts in Beautiful Disaster where Travis is like, she deserves better, da da da, and all that nonsense. And we finally got to see the inner workings of his mind and why he thought that and the way he thought that. I was in love with her. Couldn't imagine my life without her in it. But at the same time, I wanted her to have better. It's just Travis. So we're at the scene where Abby's drunk after her birthday and they're on the bathroom floor and then Travis is trying to describe these. You know, these. The hair bandy typey pulley back thingies. I don't even have a name for them. And it was hilarious and so perfect from a guy's view to call it what he called it. Hair tie bandy thingy. Works for me. That was priceless. One of the scenes that I wanted to see so bad from Beautiful Disaster was the scene when Abby left after they first had sex and he just went off his rocker. He just came unhinged. I wanted to see that so bad. 
And man, I was not disappointed with that scene at all. It was just all this frustration and he's, did I, I, did I do something? What, what, he's so confused and we're so confused. Even seeing it from Abby's head, I'm sitting there rereading it going, why are you doing this? Why? And I was just as confused as Travis. I think I related to him more at that point because I was just as confused. I mean, I really liked America and Beautiful Disaster. A lot of people don't, but I actually did because I know in these situations, the friend doesn't always have the right answers and she's very back and forth and on each side of the fence, just like Abby is, because she can't make her mind up. She's a very indecisive person because I feel like she's battling her, these inner demons that she has where she wants to have this certain life for herself and that's why that she came to Eastern was to do that and she's battling between her head and her heart and I kind of feel like America's the same way because she wants Abby to ultimately be happy but she's trying to think of what makes her happy and I know that's the same thing but they're two different schools of thought and it's really confusing but I understood America as a character and I liked her even more in this because right after when Abby left and Travis totally lost his shit she just she handled him she's like okay we're gonna do this you are gonna go shower we're gonna go do go-karts because she knew that he hadn't been there with Abby and she just she handled him one of the sweetest parts was when Abby called Parker and broke up with him and she's like I think I'm in love with Travis Maddox and then Travis is like pigeon loved me a whole paragraph of just pigeon loved me my emotions at that second was just Travis because he can't win with her she says one thing and does another and it's I felt so bad for him and that one scene he was just so elated and I loved it with the cage fight in Vegas all of Travis's thoughts leading up to that and then during the fight I really felt like because how many said he was just drunk with this and that's a great way to describe what it was especially being in his head it was just so empowering for him not to have to hold back and it was the adrenaline and had Abby not freaked out so much about it I feel like he may have fell into that trap when Abby left him and then he followed her to Morgan and she was in America's room and he was just waiting outside of her room and texting her all these things and then he was apologizing and then he got mad and he's like no immediately and then immediately he's like no I'm sorry I didn't mean that and it's all these things and I'm just like oh my god it's been a while since I read Beautiful Disaster so I forget some of the details and then when Travis came back to his apartment with Megan and Abby's there I was like what and I, I just, I got worried because I forgot how stuff happened and then I realized it brought it up to I belong to you and every time that gets me. Whew, and then the fire as if I didn't have to endure that anxiety the first time. It was even worse this time. In a good way, but not good, you know what I mean. This, the woman that he loves and then it's his brother and it's so many things and then that sheer moment when he saw her across the room and then the fire and then everything it panic yeah I think that's a great word for to describe that I, so after they're married and they're driving to gyms and then there's this one part in Travis's head I thought about my mother and the words she said to me almost a lifetime ago that's when it clicked she had asked me not to settle to fight for the person I loved and for the first time I did what she expected of me I had finally lived up to who she wanted me to be and then freaking Jim, I teared up almost every time he spoke. Trav said, I wonder what mom would say if she were here. And then Jim said to Travis, she'd say, you did good, son. And then he looked at Abby and he said, she'd say, thank you. Thank you for giving her boy back something that left him when she did. And because of the conversation earlier that we heard in Beautiful Disaster with Jim and Abby, and he, Jim told Abby that she was the only woman that Travis has loved since his mother. And so that hits extra hard with us. It's just so many freaking tears. Let me just say, I freaking loved the way that Jamie ended this. Wanna bet? It was the way the first one ended and then she made this happen and it was wonderful. The epilogue, guys, let's talk about the epilogue. I felt like it was such a good setup for the Maddox Brothers books. With the whole FBI thing and first off reading that, I was a little apprehensive, but then again, it's, I couldn't picture Travis Maddox doing anything moderately normal, so I quickly forgave that. But the whole FBI thing, it quickly made me realize that Jamie McGuire thinks these things up in, in ways that I never thought a story would go before, and she takes them there. And like with that one thought and that one idea, I mean, the, through just this epilogue, you could make a whole book from it. And so I thought that was a really great setup, even if it doesn't carry through, because from what it sounds like, he's done with all that jazz now. But I'm just saying with the other brothers, like how they have those kind of stories that I normally wouldn't have thought they would have, but they do. So I'm really, really excited to read the Maddox Brothers stories. Now, now the good part of the epilogue, the really good part. So 11 years later, they have two kids, Jessica and James, and they have another kid on the way, and they're just so happy. 
and the kids are definitely Maddox's, like really they are, and there's so much of Abby and so much of Travis just in these little conversation pieces that we had, and I, I seriously love them. They're not just, okay, these are the kids. Like, I felt like I got a piece of knowing them. She answers the what happens after beautiful disaster questions that we've always had, and we wanted a next book, but we realized that we wouldn't get that, so we were a little bit disheartened. But then she gives us this wonderful epilogue. She answers the things that we most wanted to know and we get to see more of their story without a whole other book because honestly, I don't want to see them go through more bad things and you know, books and you know, that pyramid thing that you kind of have to do to make a story interesting, that damn thing in literature. But yeah, so there would have to be problems and I don't want them to have big problems. But we got their happily ever after. We got the, that they have kids and that 11 years later, they're, they still made it and they're still them. And then Benny's out of the picture and then Mick's soon gonna be out of the picture and it's all these worries are finally settled with us. I could not have been more happy. And then there's our last paragraph. Even though we'd put each other through hell, we found heaven. Maybe that was more than a couple of sinners deserved, but I wasn't going to complain. Let me know what you guys thought of this. Colleen Hoover's right. Once I read this, I did not want to get out of Travis Maddox's head. Did not want to. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I love hearing all your thoughts and all your comments and favorite quotes and all of that down there. I will always reply back to you guys. And I'm really excited to see what you guys thought of this. Literally, everything I could have asked for was in this book, and I'm very happy with it. I'll see you guys later next to my bookworms talk.